do that. I'll be Tony Stark. I mean, that was just, I mean, he was just, he saved these little kids from cancer. That's just amazing, man. <laughs> I can answer the nine questions. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Zack Snyder's infinitesimal credit. Um, I mean, small. Batman beats Superman, always. If they fight, Batman wins. He's the only one. Superman has to win all the time. That's the rule. But if Batman fights Superman, the, he did it the wrong way. I mean, we if got it's the, if, got the same if, name. Yeah, if, <laughs> if, if, Batman, <laughs> if, if, if Batman beats Superman with the kryptonite in the Batcave, that screws that screwed up. But Batman should outwit him. He can outwit anybody. He can outwit well, demons really, from is, hell. Is he smart? Superman's smart. He's not stupid. Superman is smart. No, He's Jor-El's son. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, one of the things you have to think about is is in the Dark Knight, right? At, when that Superman, that man, well, in, 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 in the comic book, Super, in, in the Dark Knight, when Superman is and Batman are fighting, Batman is telling him, he's like, hey, look, you've never had to think about it. You just showed up and punched things because that, you know, I need to show you there is a better way. But that's not true because you guys no. contradict yourself. That's the whole point of Mr. Spiglick is that yeah. Mason needs to explain. That's why I love Mr. Spiglick because I'm finally seeing him in the movies because Superman is not stupid. The one thing about the Reeves films, as bad as they got, Christopher Reeves won on ingenuity a lot of times. He reversed the molecule process to meet Zod. Um, the supercomputer, which was stupid, but he still acid to kick me and dumb. And he dropped nuclear man down and uh, he didn't use muscle or nothing. I'll fuck nuclear man. And he created time travel. <laughs> <laughs> People are so beholden to Frank Miller. Nothing, no disrespect to Frank Miller. I love the story, but it's one man's take on these characters. DC has taken that to heart like, this is the only version these two can win. If, this, if the room is true, if Henry Cavill comes back as a slightly messed up Superman and the league has to fight him, I hope the first person who goes out is Batman. I'm that's wrong. It's not because he's never really trying to beat Batman in any of the fights. Batman is the most strategic character in the DC universe. Batman has had to figure it out because of the power of Superman. And forget about Miller. Go with Mark Wade in Tower of Babel. He figures out Batman figures out a way to take down all of the superpowered people, and the one you have to take down is Superman. And he does it because he's the most strategic person, and he has to be the most strategic, otherwise he'd be dead because he doesn't have the power. That really That's wasn't tough. a fight, though. They didn't go head to head. He just he, he 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 increased Superman's power. Yeah. And part, part of, of, part part of, part of winning is not going head to head. Right. Yeah. I'll say that as a lawyer. You don't. You don't. <laughs> 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 they never, they never, actually, they never actually. There was no conflict. That's a smart way to do it. That's what I'm talking about. Strategy. I mean, sometimes you don't have to go through the heavily fortified front door. You go through the screen Superman door. Was not beaten. <laughs> <in power. laughs> yeah. well, one of the other things that you know, one of Batman's titles is the world's greatest detective. You know, whereas one of Superman's is the beat. He couldn't figure out that Superman was Clark Kent either. <laughs> We're talking uh, <laughs> a movie that didn't happen. Uh, no, no. <laughs> in the comics, uh, Super Batman never figured out Superman was Clark Kent. Yeah, you can see in the comics. No, we actually have yeah. a yeah. 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 Before we turn into panelists. Yes, what is your question? Well, unfortunately, the original question they got access to because we're all very well educated men on this stuff, right? and you're all doing a great job. And I just want to say, you know, there is some credit to be made that Frank Miller cannot be the end all be all because we know, and maybe Alan Moore falls into this because it's from commentary I've heard, that they just don't, at the time of their writing, Frank Miller just was so caught up in his own politics that a man like Superman wasn't something they could respect, and that's why it seems to me so poorly well, well here's, here, here's the thing, when, when it comes to comic books, the way I believe is that ultimately the, the ultimate arbiter of who is or isn't a specific character is you, the reader. So, you know, for some people, uh, Batman begins, uh, or the Batman story starts with Frank Miller, Batman Year One, and then it ends with Batman, um, uh, The Dark Knight Returns, right? That is the canonical Batman, and then everything will somehow fit in there. And if you have something, and then, and, but you get to choose that. You get to choose whether that is the end of Superman, that is the end of Batman. You don't have to believe that Dark Knight 2 came out. 
you could just completely skip that. Dark Knight 3? Nope, never happened. Because for me, <laughs> Dark Knight Returns is, is that, that is the Superman, right? That is the Batman. That is, you know, um, we, we mentioned the Arthurian legends, right? In the very beginning, uh, King Arthur was just a Roman warlord, and then eventually he gets the Justice League, right? Sir Kay, Sir Tristan, uh, Sir Gawain, and then eventually he gets a magical sword, and then eventually, and then eventually we have the Round Table, and that is basically the the rise of the Justice League, right? Well, and and well, hold on a second. So, but that took about two thousand years for that to happen. At a random point in time, you could say, hey, you know what? I believe uh, Sir Gawain is the greatest knight who has never been defeated, and then someone else can say, well, but he got defeated by. Uh, um, uh, Sir Lancelot, right? And then you're like, oh, well, wait a minute, Let Sir Lancelot didn't exist when Sir Gawain was around being a badass. So now we're fighting over timelines and things like that. So ultimately, you, the reader, are the ones who chooses when your character begins and when your character ends. For some people, it's just a movie. Some people, it's a cartoon. Other people, it's a comic book. But that is the fundamental nature of comic books, of pop culture, and, why, and, and stories, and why, why we're here. And I was just saying, I think the DC tradition on that is just, you know, the readers, you know, take what they take. And I think DC stands for just that Batman is the more cunning, and Superman, because he's the bigger boy scout, has the bigger heart, and it's, 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 has the greater code of ethics, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have a uh, quick question in the back. Yeah, um, what's um, one element of one of the other Superman that you think would enrich the story of your Superman? So, like, what's something Good that question. you could bring in from, let's say, Roman Superman? Can I? We, we always base the Bronze Age Superman on George Reeves. So that's yeah, a very direct answer. Well, I, I personally would have liked to see uh, my Clark or Superman like really get mad. Like you never really, you never really see him like pissed off, and that that would have been cool. Um, I wish Christopher Reeve had um, the Justice League with him, right? Or references to the rest of the DC universe. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, you know, my Superman is a standalone Superman, right? He, he has no other connection out to the real world, um, or to the DC world, excuse me. Um, and I believe that he would have been, you know, it would have been really cool to see, you know, homages to, to things in the background, you know, uh, kind of like, um, you know, the, the CW shows. Though so you'll see Acme, uh, um, Chemical Company in the background, you know, you'll hear Palmer Tech, uh, mentioned every once in a while. If if my Superman had more of those things, these little touchstones to the rest of the DC universe, I think that it would be a near flawless trilogy. I would love one of my favorite things about uh, Bronze Age comics, uh, which, by the way, thank you, Elliot. Thanks for uh, your career. Um, <laughs> 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 one of my favorite things about Bronze Age comics is yeah, I know. <laughs> I said, I, I said so far, thank so you. So far, thank you. Um, is, is there, is there uh, 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 wanting to tackle social issues? There's a great issue of Lois Lane, issue 106, where she steps into a machine and comes out and she's a black woman. Lois Lane, that happened. And then she has a Superman, would you still date me? And he was like, uh, 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 and that's amazing. That's crazy, I love it. I would love if modern Superman comics uh, maybe treated Clark and Superman a little bit less on a pedestal and got him down and gritty, and I want to hear his takes on what's happening in the world right now. And I would love for things to be a little bit more socially conscious, or, or to just get his takes on it, and, and to be a little bit more daring to just aware of what is happening right now in the world, as opposed to treating him like the, uh, the, 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 the example that we all strive for. That's great, and that's Superman. But also, what does he think about stuff like Black Lives Matter? I would love to read that comic book. That would be fantastic. Didn't we just do that though? I mean, um, Morrison did it um, uh, with with his relaunch in New Fifty Two. Multi multiversity. But, but but especially the the recent one where uh, Superman um, uh, becomes embroiled in the neighborhood conflict and he cha they they tie up Powerless, his covers. Yeah. That yeah. was powerful stuff. Yeah. So I, I agree, but I think they are doing it. Yeah. And I'll take credit for it as Golden Age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 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 but, yes. but I started that. <laughs> Thank you. I love well, well, technically you started everything, I guess. You know. Well, that's true, and, I, and that's why I should win. Um, <laughs> I think for Henry Cavill's Superman, I think this is across the board, everyone agrees that if he had 
a little bit, and I think this comes from every generation of Superman, is a little bit more hope and optimism. Yeah. I a think more fun. That, that would be the key Anything. thing. Um, because I think that there are things that he does as Clark Kent that I don't think he needs from other generations of Clark Kent. He, to me, he feels a lot like the Superman the Animated Series Clark Kent, where he's kind of more of just, he's not a bumbler. He's, it's not, yeah, he's more of a small little Clark, where it's just, he's just Clark Kent. He's just that. He's himself without the suit, but he still finds ways of like hiding that identity. Uh, but I think a little bit more of, of hope and optimism in. Look, they keep saying they're gonna do it. We'll, we'll have to see with Justice League if we do get a truer, more hopeful Superman, but that's that's the hope. I would like to bring the Silver Age mythos, some of that into my Golden Age Superman. Uh, some of the, some of the, yeah, some mm -hmm. of the characters, uh, the villains especially, it would be nice to have Brainiac there. Um, um, we're, I'm kind of stuck with Prankster and Toy Man, which is, is somewhat limiting. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't make that wish because I would instead wish to bring the Henry Cavill Superman into my universe so that I could kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody see the Time Magazine article where the week uh, Batman vs. Superman came out, Henry Cavill was walking around Times Square for like yeah, yeah. three yeah. days straight. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. recognized him. Who's this yeah. kid? <laughs> that, that really, you know, you could wear glasses and not be bad. Take off your glasses. <laughs> Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Do you know that it works? Some people may work. actually have to go. We can always continue this after it. However, to ask the ultimate question before we know why these gentlemen picked their Superman. So with a one sentence brief statement about why you think your Superman is the best, we're gonna put this to a vote because I know some of you guys have to go. But let's just do one quick one sentence. Are we starting, starting the Yeah, let's, order? let's okay. start Kyle. Oh, okay. Easy, champion of the oppressed, helping those in need. Mythology. Well, mythology too. I mean, he made a point of, uh, of making it consistent with Greek and Norse and Yoruba and Igbo and uh, Indian mythology. It's recurring themes. Especially in the first season, the Lois and Clark took a while to really figure itself out, and it was a lot of different things. It was a screwball comedy, it was a lighthearted drama, it was a political thriller, and throughout all of these, Dean Kane was able to maintain a consistent, believable, and relatable version of Clark Kent. Um, I believe that the, the pinnacle, right, of, of uh, in, in my defense, um, Superman 1, 2, and then Superman Returns, Brandon Ralph, um, I believe that the, the best thing that can encapsulate those two characters in that one Superman would be the teaser trailer for Superman Returns, where it is just the voiceover and, you know, it's just a, a Jor-El saying, hey, you know what, these, these people, like, they're, 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 there's good in them, right? They, they can be good, they want to be good, and you can help them. You know, it is that sentiment that hey, this guy sent his only son to have, to make us better, and you know just that though that two minute trailer, you can just watch it and be inspired. It is amazing. Modern comic books have had the benefit of exploring a some of the best stories ever told with the character Superman have been published after 1985 and until today, some of the best stories across the board. And they've always centered around the idea that Superman's greatest power is his instinctive knowledge of right and wrong. And that's why modern comics of Superman is the place you can go if you want the best stories. I think that this new generation of Superman have the challenge of making the character relatable. So they can not only bring in old audiences, but also intrigue new audiences to actually care about this character. Uh, so I think humanizing him and making him relatable was the biggest challenge of, of making this new version of Superman, and I think it worked. A lot more people now are on board with Superman because, because of how they played out this character in this way. So, thank you so much, and let's start with loudness of cheering, clapping, screaming. Also, I think all panels are out, so you guys can be as loud as you want. 
We're going to go by how loud is it as the winner. We're going to start with Jim, Golden Age, and George Reeves. episode of Comics on Comics at the end of the month, uh, next month. Um, Doctor Strange with, uh, who's on that panel? Jessica is on the panel, right? Yes. And who's the other person? And Chris Saunders. Um, we will be having an episode that will be released after this one. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Jay McCobb. Uh, and uh, I have a couple of projects I'm not uh, comfortable in the else of yet. But, um, at Nerdist, you can find me every day where I do a movie, where I do a daily movie news column called Movie Morsels, and I review Walking Dead, Shield, and Flash. Every week as well. Wrote a new book. It's called Not My Closet. Um, it's not like anything else I've read. I've written. I thought about um, people don't fly under their own power. They don't wear spandex. There are a few superheroes in it, but only oh, ancillary characters. Um, so far, it's out on Amazon uh, as an ebook. Grab one of these flyers and scan one of these QR codes, and you're there. Uh, you can check out my website at zackforreal.com, Z A C K. The shows I review are not on anymore, so there's it. Uh, I am Paul Manuel Rocha, a host of Comics on Comics. You can find Comics on Comics on. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, you can download us on iTunes. It is a monthly show where it's pretty much kind of like this. Um, and yeah, it's good times all around. You can uh, follow me on Twitter at Hector is Funny, and I also do a YouTube show with this guy, Adam Lavick, a really smart guy, and I'll let him promote that. <laughs> uh, I'm just at Adam Lavick, and we do a show every week called Superhero News. We break down all the latest movie news, TV news, uh, we do trailer reactions, film reviews, so we'll be doing stuff for Doctor Strange, Star Wars, and uh, maybe God of the DC Extended Universe gets better. <laughs> so, thank you so much everybody for coming. I would actually have a quick question if someone could take a group photo for us. And if you guys had any more questions for them, and if they're able to do it, they would be more than happy to answer it after the panel. I'll, I'll find any of you. Can we also give Jessica a huge uh, round of applause? Uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 we're also using the camera, but let's go 